Magnetism. Magnets. You know, magnets stick to some things, like laboratory doors. Pretty nice decorations, huh? Magnetism is invisible. And magnetism comes from minerals found in the Earth. And the Earth is so full of these minerals that the Earth itself is a giant magnet. That's what makes compasses point north. A compass is just a magnet that's free to move. Now, the most common mineral that can be made into a magnet is iron. Right here is some iron powder, and this is a magnet. Watch. The magnet makes the iron powder form these lines, and we call that a magnetic field. Now, only three things can stick to a magnet. Iron, nickel, and cobalt. Nothing else will stick. Not rubber dinosaurs, aluminum, silver or copper coins, gold jewelry, but iron sticks great. Now, magnetism comes from moving electrons. You know what we call moving electrons? No. We call it electricity. Now, where would we get some electricity? Well, how about from this battery? Now, when I connect this battery, electricity will flow through this coil. And we'll get magnetism. Here we go. Watch. There's enough magnetism to hold up all this weight. Now, what'll happen when we disconnect the wire? Well, the magnetism will stop. You ready? Sure. Three. One thousand. Two. One thousand. One. One thousand. You live on a magnet. That's right, the Earth is a big magnet. That's what makes a compass work. Magnets are made of metals. Iron, cobalt, or nickel. If a magnet comes near one of these metals, it pulls on it. If a magnet comes near another magnet, it pushes on it or pulls on it. With magnets, likes repel, opposites attract. Electrons in iron are spinning. Now, on a piece of iron like this, the electrons are spinning all different directions. But in a magnet that's made of iron, the electrons are all lined up. So that a magnet has a front end and a back end, a north pole and a south pole. Now, what would happen if you could cut a magnet in half? Would you get a magnet that was only a north pole or a magnet that was only a south pole? Well, take a look at this. These are the electron cars of science. And they each have a front end and a back end, a north end and a south end. Now, right now, they're parked all which way. But let's line them up like the electrons in a magnet. Back it up, Joe. OK, Sally. There. Now, let's cut them in half. See, we end up with two smaller magnets. These cars have a north end and a south end, a north pole and a south pole. So if you break a magnet in half, you get two smaller magnets that each have a north pole and a south pole. Near as we can tell, there's no way to get a magnet with just one pole. This train floats over its rails on a magnetic field. It's floating on magnetism, so there's no friction to slow it down, so it goes fast. Did you ever wonder which way is north? You could tell if you had a compass. They're easy to make. Just rub a needle with a magnet. Always rub in the same direction, like this. Rub it a lot, like 50 or 60 times. Now, put the needle on top of a film cap. It's plastic and it floats. The needle will slowly turn to point north. Science always points you in the right direction. Now remember, magnets are made of iron, nickel, or cobalt. And the Earth is a giant magnet because its core is mostly iron and nickel. You'll find magnets in all sorts of things that you wouldn't expect. Like doorbells, electric can openers, Telephones, stereo speakers, and videotapes, bank cards, refrigerator magnets, and audio cassettes. 
very tall metal towers, such as the Eiffel Tower in Paris and the Space Needle in Seattle, are made of steel, which is mostly iron. So a compass needle points right to it. So if you're standing next to it, you could tell. <laughs> you probably figured it out on your own, though, huh? This is magnetic or not? A screwdriver. Magnetic or not? Cold hard cash. Magnetic or not? A levitating train. Magnetic or not? This has been another magnetic or not.